Well, uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's exciting to see so many of you and to hear some of these uh, presentations. My name is Eric Bremen. I was born in Venezuela, a country that by any measure should be one of the wealthiest countries in the world, not just by aggregate GDP, but by individual prosperity. Unfortunately, when I was 14, I had to leave my country of birth initially in pursuit of better educational opportunities, but I never went back due to the lack of opportunities in general. I started on a quest as a young student from high school onwards to university to think about why is it that a country with so much potential, such as Venezuela, ended up with so much misery and poverty, and what I could do to help rid the world of poverty itself. I realized that I was looking at the wrong question, that it isn't about how you end poverty, rather how you catalyze prosperity. Thus, over 20 years ago, I started on a quest for how to drive maximum prosperity to the most amount of people anywhere in the world. I started a company called New Way Capital, which ultimately led me to where I am today, to start Prospera. So Prospera is ultimately a governance platform for parallel societies because what we realized is that a lot of the underlying issues that hold back development, that drive prosperity, but also keep us from having flying cars and living to 200 and the most cool innovations that we hear about, is generally a lack of regulatory and legal environment that is supportive of as opposed to creating friction for um, the best amongst us in society, the, the entrepreneurs, the inventors, the innovators. So Prospera set out to build a city with the optimal legal and regulatory environment to maximize human prosperity. But we quickly realized that to say let's build a city is relatively easy, but to actually go through the process, well, it's been multiple decades and there are many steps and the core infrastructure necessary to even start on a project like this is invisible. It's about politics, it's about agreements, it's about regulatory frameworks. So I want to mention to you a few of the projects that we have. I will be going deeper in this presentation into our first city on the island of Roatan called St. John's Bay. But I did want to highlight a journey that we've been through to share it with you and also to invite you towards the end of the presentation to join this very important journey. This scale at the horizontal is by no means at scale. The steps include not just going from an idea to signing LOIs, getting memorandums of understanding, of which we have several, but then there's this legislative step that must be engaged upon if you're going to do this in the context of partnership with a sovereign nation, which itself can take you know, three to five years, if not ten. Um, our first project on Roatan has gone through most of these steps, and we're currently receiving our first movers and on a quest to reach critical mass defined by the operational apparatus being cash flow positive. Um, all of this is built upon an infrastructure of legal, regulatory, tax, dispute resolution, security, and infrastructure services, which add up to these four pillars. These four pillars within Prospera, provided as a service, enables us to play in the governance as a service space. We needed it for our first city, but we're able to offer it for multiple cities running on the same open source governance platform to make the process much more fluid, consistent, and optimized for innovation and prosperity. The four pillars revolve around the regulatory environment, which is an open source approach with full reciprocity over all OECD countries and a growing list of peer countries. The ability to propose new regulatory frameworks if you're in an industry that does not already have a sufficiently supportive framework anywhere in the world or the ability to operate without a prescriptive regulatory framework and simply under common law, as long as you recognize you have no corporate veil protection. There are some taxes, but they're very low, very simple, and very straightforward to comply with. Any disputes get resolved through arbitration exclusively, 
and we have an in-house arbitration center to service you with a relatively low cost and high speed. And all so-called public services are offered privately and for profit. The quest to build our first city has led us into a number of achievements that we're extremely proud about, including having raised over $100 million so far to build the first city, over 1,400 residents, physical and digital. We have over 1,000 acres incorporated into the special jurisdiction with over 160 companies incorporated and over 4,000 jobs that have been created within the local economy. So let me tell a little bit about where our first city is at in Roatan, because it's amongst many places, not only beautiful and underrated, but I think a very strategic location for a project such as this. To start with, it's on the western side of the Caribbean, so away from the hurricane belt, which is nice and very attractive. Uh, we have direct daily flights from Miami and Houston in the US, so it's very accessible. Almost anywhere in the world, you can get to one of those two hubs within one flight away. It's a mostly English-speaking population, former British colony, uh, less than 100,000 people live there. Yet, the size of the island is one square mile larger than the island of Hong Kong, where almost 1.5 million people live, occupying less than 30% of the surface area. On the island of Roatan, we've started building this, what we hope will be a beautiful city, uh, as a place to build with real people in the real world and in a real jurisdiction. Many of us, many out there that want to do parallel societies or new city projects, need a place to actually start building in reality. We began this quest after a decade plus of legal, regulatory, political, diplomatic efforts, breaking ground in the middle of COVID with our first building, which we call the Beta Building. It's a mixed-use facility, which has been now occupied entirely by offices. Currently working on our second major project, which is a mixed-use tower as well, 14 stories, residential and uh, commercial. Having, in parallel, negotiated and finally closed the acquisition of a pre-existing, underbuilt resort of about 400 acres, which gives us access immediately to not just a beautiful golf course, but wonderful beach club amenities, a hotel in which we're hosting conferences. We already booked the entirety of Q1 of next year. Uh, we have a school within the jurisdiction. My kids, I live there full time. My kids go to the school within the city uh, in partnership with Guidepost Montessori. We even have our own Bitcoin center with a Bitcoin ATM, the only one and first one on the island of Roatan. Um, and I could go on. One of the other amenities we really enjoy revolves around golf, and this is our own version of Top Golf, hitting right onto the Caribbean Ocean. Um, but how do we scale? How do we go from having done this incredible amount of work over the last decade or so to create the foundations so that now we can build up the first of what we hope will be many cities? Well, our approach revolves around opening up and creating special districts and inviting alternative and additional network and parallel societies to come and build with us. Nomad earlier mentioned that they're building one of their nodes within Prospera and we're open to many, many more, so that in reality, what we think of as a city is a community of communities coming together in pursuit of innovation, in pursuit of your own visions, but in an environment that creates generalized prosperity. We'll be launching a pilot project called Bayavu, helping online communities become on land communities. I encourage you to take a note of this QR code, or when you have a chance, Google, Unreal Engine, Saha Hadid, Prosper, and Roatan. And you get a deeper dive of what this project is all about. But in short, the ability of turning online communities through an online configurator into ultimately a physical location where you can co-live, co-work, and pursue your vision in reality. Uh, we're proud to work with many of you already and uh, look forward to 2024 being the year where we break ground on several special district projects. Um, we are also launched the City Builders Network earlier this year, and this is if you can't move or if you don't have a network society per se, then you can join ours. 
in the context of helping build the city through decentralized efforts. Most major projects can be uh, decentralized if you bring down to the tasks and let the community participate. So very excited, looking forward to hosting you in Roatan when you come visit. There's more information in this QR code. Thank you very much.